be a member of Heartland Community Church to take communion. Just need to know Christ as your Savior. So please, if you haven't got one of those, please please grab one of those or, or wave at one of the trustees and they'll, they'll bring some around. A few announcements this morning. Um, first of all, uh, the new church directory is available at the Welcome Center, or if you'd like a digital copy, um, you can email info at heartlandgb.com, which goes to Lori, and she'll get one sent to you that way. Um, also, as a reminder, we do have the family intercession prayer time in the library each morning at 930, where we lift up all the prayer requests to to the Lord. If you'd like to participate in that, we'd sure love to see you there. Um, also, I think we have several visitors this morning. If you have a child and need the nursery, the nursery is available back there. Um, we have, and it's newborn through pre-K. As far as the weekly Bible studies, just as a reminder, due to Thanksgiving week, we're not going to have those this week. So if you show up Wednesday for Bible study, uh, the door will probably be locked. So just remember, no Bible studies this week. Um, also, uh, and I think everybody's nose is probably telling them about the wonderful food back there, but we have our Thanksgiving dinner. We're immediately following the service today. So please uh, stay after church and enjoy a time of fellowship and good food. Um, also, on December 10th, um, Heartland's going to host a Christmas party for foster families and families who have adopted foster children. Um, we want these kids to feel the love of Christ um, in their lives, so please consider donating any of the following items, which can be gifted to them, uh, gloves, stocking caps, toothbrushes, chapstick, lip balm, hair bows, uh, Wow, it's a long list. I think if you, if you need the list of what to donate, get that in the Welcome Center. Otherwise, um, I'm going to start to sound like I'm never going to end here. Um, and last but not least, um, the Operation Christmas Child gift boxes. We've had a really good collection week so far. As of yesterday, we had 541 boxes. We've still got this afternoon to go. So... Um, to save our backs, I did not bring all 541 in here. So we have a representative stack here. And then Pastor Troy is going to come up here in a minute, and we're going to pray for those. But if you have not brought those in, um, we'll still be open to collect those from noon to 2 this afternoon. So please feel free to bring those in. And if you're really an early bird, we're going to be loading them up. And Ryan's graciously agreed to uh, haul them to Wichita tomorrow morning, but I will be here from 5 to 7 in the morning if you're absolutely last minute and need to get a box in. So um, appreciate that, and, and uh, we just need to pray that those boxes will touch kids' lives and they'll come to know Christ. So I'm looking for Pastor Troy. He's still over there. Okay, well, if I could have any of the... <laughs> I'm not preaching. No, um, but if I could just, oh, there's Pastor Troy. If I could have Troy and the, some of the trustees come up and we'll uh, lay hands on these boxes and pray for these boxes. Hey, Vic. We do things together. Dear Heavenly Father, I, I pray as you send these gifts out, God, and that you would anoint your word that will be inside of each box. That your very word is like a double-edged sword, God, sharper than that. That it would penetrate whoever reads it, Father God, men, women, and children, God. I pray that the children would, would take the word to the parents as they open their box and that they would sit in their places and read in the quiet place, God. And that these would enter your very throne room, God, and we would glorify you by the seeds that we're sowing to, to give to the children and make sure they have something to celebrate. But let us always celebrate you by your power and your glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray blessings over this. I pray blessings over the hands that have put these together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
let me just say this before, before you guys get started. Welcome, everybody here today. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, Lord amen. amen? One more time, it's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen? amen. Much is going to be accomplished when we all come together. The more hands that serve, the greater the victory. Did you hear that, church? The more hands that serve, the greater the victory. Two hands is not enough. We need hundreds of hands. I'm just going to ask you today to give your heart to Christ. I'm going to ask you today that, that you join in and worship and let the power of the Holy Spirit consume you. I want to welcome Crosswinds Biker Church here today. Vic, the Lord says to tell you that he loves you today because you honor him. You walk in obedience. And when people judge you, you don't stop. You only are judged by him. You need to hear that. Don't let no one stop you from what you're doing. Just because you're different. God loves you. Loves you Thanks too. for being here. Let's worship. Once again, welcome to Heartland Community Church. Uh, something that's been heavy on my heart since last week when we had a guest speaker, Jamie, come in is that uh, there was a group of people that served a golden calf. And, you know, they do that because the golden calf serves us. And, that, and that's really not the way it is for us and God. We serve him. And so we're here to serve him today. And I believe in the power of prayer. But I just, it's just great, a good reality check that, hey, we're here to serve. We're here to serve him. So uh, please join with us and, uh, and stand in his love. Amen. When darkness tries to roll over my bones. Sorrow comes to steal the joy I own. When brokenness and pain is all I know, oh, I won't be shaken. Oh, I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love he no longer has a place to hide I am not captive to the lies I'm not afraid Chance when I stand in your love. 
Father, we just thank you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Come breathe in us a fresh renewing, God, of your presence. We are so thankful for you, God. And we are thankful that even in our times of difficulty, God, that we can still praise you and worship you. And that our raising a hallelujah makes the darkness flee, makes the enemy flee. He wants no part of it. Praise the Lord, Father. You are our victory, and we worship you. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. And I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm.
everything that is in us, God. Father, now I just pray that you prepare our hearts, God. That you open the eyes of our hearts and the ears of our understanding and that we may see you, God, for what you want to do today. God, we are here for you. This is all for you. And we praise you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated in heavenly places. Bye, so worship team, stay right here. So I want, God laid this on my heart. I want to do something. I want to go back and I want you to sing the chorus of raise a hallelujah, okay? Or start in somewhere, wherever it's comfortable for you guys. Listen, it says that I'm going to sing louder than the storm. Somebody over here is having a storm. I don't know what the storm in your life is today, but I want the whole church to pin your storm to the cross. I want the whole church to sing louder than what the enemy is doing in your mind today. Do you hear God? So they're going to go back, and I want you to sing. And for a moment, I want you to forget about the pain that the enemy is causing over you. Maybe it's with your work. Maybe it's a sickness. Maybe it's somebody in your family. Whatever it is, we're going to go back and we're going to sing louder than the storm because the storm starts to go away. The storm starts to be healed. The storm starts to get better when we start praising Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's do Amen. it. Amen. Well, we got to stand. Hmm. Let's stand. Amen. We're going to go right into the chorus. Here we go. And I want to sing in the middle of the storm. Sing a little louder. 
God wants to take the storm and wipe it away in your life. He wants to calm the waves that are slapping up against you. He wants to bring a calmness over the church today. When the world says that I'm going to disturb things, God says I'm going to make peace. There will be a day when God chooses to bring war, but it won't be against the church. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I, I just pray today that you bless these people. God, you're telling me how much you love them. There shouldn't be anybody here today that doesn't feel love because the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus is here. And I pray that, that we move forward, God, and we say the things that need to be said, that we speak truth and then we bring unity. Man's often brought unity before truth but not this day. Father God, we, we love you, and we invite you to be here. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. We're going to take communion here in a ju just a second. Everybody here is welcome to take communion if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. You don't have to be a member of Heartland Church. It's not Troy's table. It's not Heartland Church's table. It's Jesus Christ's table. Far too long has religion said that when you walk in the church, if you don't belong here, you don't take communion. That's not right. That table and that love is from Jesus Christ, and that is for all men and women. So I encourage you to accept Jesus as your Savior if you haven't today. I encourage, uh, if you need a communion cup, raise your hand. We got men that are walking around with trays. They'll bring you a cup. So we got several up here and over here, but, but just enjoy what God's going to do for you. We got a short communion video, and then, then we'll have communion. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting with verse 23. For I have received from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, and that the Lord Jesus on the same night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let each man or woman examine themselves, and so let them eat of the bread and drink of the cup. You guys, the greatest transaction and covenant in the history of man was bought with Jesus Christ's blood. And it can't be erased. It's there to save you and give you eternal life. Grasp what Jesus did at the cross. He won the victory. He not only won the battle, he won the war over you. 
See, I don't know if you realize, but there's a war going on over you personally. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, He comes into your heart, He comes into your life, and He forgives your sins through the sacrifice that He made on the cross by shedding His blood. Amen? Satan lost. Satan lost. The only way he has a chance of winning is if you don't give in to God. Give in to God today. The bread represents his body, which was broken at the whipping post. He was beat so many times. And every whip that he took, he was thinking of you because he knew you in your mother's womb. So pin your sicknesses to the cross. Pin your hurts to the cross today because it's already been done. Everything that you're praying for, God's already got an answer coming. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it and he gave thanks. And Father, we, we thank you, Yahweh, for sending your son, Yeshua, to save us. We thank you, Lord, and we worship you and we praise you. Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body. And in the same manner, he took the cup. The cup represents his blood. The cup represents the shedding out and the pouring out and Do you guys realize that Jesus poured out every ounce that he had? He couldn't give anymore. When they beat him, they beat him again. When they nailed him, they nailed him again. When they ridiculed him, they ridiculed him again. He couldn't have poured out any more than what he did. Think about that. Some, sometimes whatever we're working on, whatever ministry we're in, whatever job we're in, sometimes there's days we show up and we only give 80%, some 50. But Jesus on that day of work, he gave 100%. There was nothing left. He finished the race. He fought the good fight. Jesus said, take drink. This morning, I am so blessed. The ministry brings people into your life that... Vic, if you'll come on up here, brother. That's on. The ministry brings people into your life that... that encourage you. That protect you. That watch over you. So many people said, Troy, you've heard it on the streets. Why is Troy teaming up with the biker church? Why is Heartland Church doing that? You've, so you've heard it. So We're doing it because it's about him, and there's, there's people that are lost, and God's calling us to go to those places. He told me on Main Street in Hoisington, he said, Troy, these will be the guys that will go with you. I'm not calling the other ones. These will be the guys that go with you and Kyle. Right. And we're, we're waiting on what's next. And I believe there's a, a stadium. I believe that there's a street. I believe that there's a tent. And, and, and we're headed there. And I know Buzz is going with us. Mm -hmm. Revival's here. But we're going to miss it if we sit in the church. That's what these guys are good at. They don't sit in the church. They do things differently and they're made fun of. Vic, I, I, I know God's laid something on your heart today, but I want you to share that, that short story that you told me out there about the person in the grocery store. They need to hear that today. All yours, brother. First, I want to thank everybody for um, inviting us here. Um, yes, we are a little different, we're a little rowdy, but we love God. We are the rebels on the front line. 
Um, before we go real quick, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for allowing me to come here. Thank you again for getting into my life. The Holy Spirit, you know you're welcome in me all the time. Like I tell people, just be yourself. Don't change it for nobody. Be yourself. Because you can't lie when you're yourself. You cannot change when you're yourself. So thank you again. Amen. Um, real quick, you know, I'm the founder pastor of Crosswinds of Kansas Biker Church in Hoisington. Yes, we're a little different. I mean, we're all the same, I mean, we sit down beside each other. Um, I was telling Troy when I went to Dillon's uh, to get my wife some stuff, and as I was walking through, I had this guy behind me the whole time. And I kept looking back at him, and he was right there again. I thought, man, what does he need? So I kept walking, turned around, and there he is again. Finally, I turned around and said, do you need something? He goes, you're offending me. I said, good, I'm doing my job. Um, I was wearing this. You can see my brother's over here. We wear it all the time because we're proud of it, but we have Christ on our back. It gives an opportunity for us to pray with somebody. They know exactly who we are. We're Christ. So I looked at him, and I was like, oh, okay. And he just kept going at it and at it and at it with me. And I just kept going, okay, all right, all right. And finally I said, are you done? And he walked off. Well, I started going back doing my stuff, and I thought, wait a second here. So I went, I chased him down, and I started following him around. <laughs> finally caught up to him. He turned around and goes, what do you want? I was like, I need to pray with you. And that's all it took. And he was mad, not like what you were saying, is we're fighting a battle, the good and the evil. His evil felt my good. He hated it. He didn't hate me. He hated what's inside of me. And when I came to the Lord 20-some years ago, I got on fire. Man, if God can forgive who I am and what I did, man, I give it all to you. And that's how we are. We're Yes, you see us going down 10th Street. We might get the plan. That's just who we are. We play. I mean, we get the zigzagging. We call it tag. You're it. Chase me down. And then we see the cops, and we'll go, oh, 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 we're in trouble now. They usually just laugh at us. But I've been emotional back and forth what I was going to speak about today. A lot of you know my testimony. I was going to give it. But when I walked through the doors, it changed. We've got to be thankful for what we have. Like Pat, uh, Troy was saying, that this is just a building. I don't know how many of you came out of the building and go out there on the streets like what we do. We go to Sturgis. I don't know how many of you ever been to Sturgis. It's not a good place. But there is some places that are very awesome there. And I don't have my John to look at to get the mic up. Um, but we're the ones on the front lines. We will take our, we will go there to find anybody. If you look at these guys, they're, they're not clean cut. They're not, I mean... Yeah, talking about you. But but these guys will go to battle with me. I'll walk up to the biggest, baddest biker there is and talk to him. I won't ask him right off the bat, do you know Jesus? Because the time will come. I'll just start talking to him. They're human beings just like we are. But the difference between us and them is we don't have a filter. I will tell you how it is. I mean, I talked to Kyle, and, and that still comes back to my head, everything under the sun. I said, be who you are. Don't let nobody change you. Just be who you are. I tried to, I tried to get the short hair, take the earrings out. I was so unhappy that whole time that, says, Lord, what do you want me to do? Well, he says, be yourself. You can't lie who, you're, who you are. You can't be, I can't be a Troy. I don't know how to, I have to call George and mow the grass. I don't know how to do it. But I can ride bikes. And that's what I'm proud of these guys is. Travis came to my house one time and I asked him, I said, why don't you go to church? And he gave me an excuse. I, I've heard every excuse there is. I said, well, if I do this, would you come? Travis and Jesse and John and Aaron have been with me from day one. Then Ray and everybody else jumped on board. It's not because of me. It's because of him. It's not about what I do. 
But these guys help me. They tweak everything about the church. I've had so many people come into church and say, you're doing it the wrong way. Why are you doing it this way? Why don't you do it this way? Blah, blah, blah. What is the right way? What is the right way? I mean, you know, our king, our Lord, he could, he could be with the richest people in the world. But who is he with? Us. All of you guys. I mean, we can shave our hair. I can be a businessman in two minutes. But it's not who I am. It's not who I want to be either. I've been cut down, drugged to the dirt, not like Jesus, because I can never, ever be like him. But on the church, I've been called a cult. Yeah, that's cool, because Jesus was a cult too. Oh, we're doing something right. Um, we've, we don't have live music like you guys. We do can music, because it works for us. The biggest thing is, when I baptize somebody, where, where's Mikey? Would you stand up real quick? I'm baptizing him next Sunday at the church. He gave his life to the Lord, and we're just going to leave it as that. I mean, I met him at the park on Labor Day, him and his kids, and he came up to me, and then that's how it starts. We use the bikes as tools. Yeah, they might be shiny, loud. That's our church bells, is our Harley bikes. Um, you know, God was thankful that he gave me that back. And that's what I'm thankful for is Thanksgiving, yes, we have food. And my poor wife's at home, and everybody pray for her. She's got a cold, and she's coughing. She don't want to be here and freak everybody out. So she stayed at home, but she slaved over the turkeys and the hams last night. And she did an awesome, awesome job. Um, that thing needs a little... Um, but that's what we do. I mean, that's we try to give everything back. Um, we're not on. None of us at, at the church is on payroll. We give it all back, and that's because who we are. We don't think we should get paid for it. And I, when I, people say, "Well, you're Pastor Vic." Sometimes I get really humbled when I hear that word. Is thank you, but. I'm a nobody trying to tell everybody about Jesus. And that's where all, we all should do that. Every one of us, you, you, every one of you got a gift. What I'm saying is get up and find it. Uh, me and Troy's been talking. There's a lot of stuff we're going to do behind the scenes that we've been talking about, like the church revival. My biggest thing is I hope we don't scare you guys. We're going to put bikes all the way around it. Okay? We're going to surround it. And... Um, I'm going to stick it out there, too. If, if anybody you know, anybody that you're scared to go talk to, come and get me. I will go up in their door. I've been in meth houses. I've been in the... I, I was there. I've been in the strip joints. I was there. But then people need to be saved just like the rest of us. Every person... My goal is to catch everybody. You know, I, I, I talk to the people with drugs. They're humans. They're humans. They're just having a rough time in their lives. Don't cut them down. Bring them up. We're supposed to build them up, and that's what we do. I mean, me and Bones was talking about, we, sometimes we drop the ball. We walk through somewhere, and um, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll be having a bad day, and somebody will talk to me, and I'll, I will fly to ignore you and keep walking. So I get on the bike and go, man, I blew it. And I go try to find that person. I blew it. I'm looking at these guys because they're, they're my backbone. I'm the state elder, too, in BFC, Bikers for Christ. I wear a lot of hats. And the only reason I can get away with it because I got a group of guys that I can lean on. I'm tired, guys. Can you do it? But it goes back to the, thank, the thank, thankfulness is I shouldn't deserve anything I got. My wife, my church, my life. Because the biggest thing was, when I was going to church, is how can God forgive me because I destroyed your marriage? How can God forgive me when I beat the tar out of a guy for no reason? How can God, and it just kept going through my head. till one day, I, I, I heard him. 
the devil says, huh, I'm getting you. And that's when I heard him. Turned around and said, you don't have me no more. My Lord has me now. And our thing is, we're, we go full throttle with everything, right, guys? So we went full throttle for the devil. I'm going 120 full throttle for the Lord. We're building a drag bike. It's called the Ghost, the Holy Ghost. And um, it, it's a reason why we're building it. It's not because how fast we can go. We think there's an opportunity of praying out there. So like I was telling Troy, we think outside the box. And um, I know me and you are going to do a lot together. I know there is. And that band better be ready behind you. I'm going to take you guys places that you're going to be uncomfortable. You can't take me where I can't be uncomfortable because I've been there. But I'm going to make you guys uncomfortable. I know you're ready because you guys got the Holy Spirit. We're not by ourselves. We have you too. When we go places, our ladies will stay at home and pray for us. We know they're with us. And that's what I'm trying to get the point across to you guys today is just because you're sitting here, you can still do a lot. Pray for us. A lot of you can't go where I go. And if you want to, come on. I mean, I'll, I'll, we'll show you what we do. We take you. But a lot of people can, can't come to me because they look at me and go, man, that dude's wild. But they can come to Troy. Me and Troy has talked about it is if I have a person that's coming to our church and leaves and go to another church, guess what? I've won. We've won because they're going to another church. Now, if they don't go to another church, we're going to go chase them down. Why? What happened? Because, you know, every church, I don't care where you go, is going to get offended. I've been offended by every church. And how many of you have been kicked out of a church? Two, three? Wow. I've been kicked out of three of them. But that was before I was saved. But when I got saved, man, it's changed. And I don't judge people the way they look anymore. I don't know their background. Um, I was a bull rider. I don't know how many, me and, where's Brazil, man? Me and him talked about that. We had a blast. I said, yeah, man, I, I'm still sore over that. Everything I did in my life, I did it 100%. Motorcycle racing, 100%. Bull riding, yeah, 120% there because I feel it. So now it's 100% 100, 100 and more for the Lord. But I'm going to leave it there and give it back to Troy because this is the man right here. But come and find us. Come afterwards. I'll be here. We're going to be eating. Come and get, come and talk to me, and I'll talk to you one on one, or I'll, I'll tell you my life story. Mm -hmm. And um, I really don't care. I know a lot of you. I know you out there, and um, you can say, "Man, this dude did this." I don't care. You can tell tell people what I did because it doesn't bother me no more. Amen. So. Amen. Thanks, brother. didn't want to quit rolling kind of like the word of the Lord and the Holy Spirit he wants to keep rolling you guys Vic has got a gift and Vic I know that when I go with you I can't dress like this it's going to draw immediate attention <laughs> so I'll put on jeans and, and maybe a leather jacket too no Harleys I don't ride bikes no I'll drive my truck. <laughs> but you guys, the point is, is children's church, yes, you can be dismissed. Sorry, kids. They'll have some fun back there and they'll do some learning. You guys, the point is we all have a ministry and, and we need to pray in your life what God's drawing you into. Ask God what your ministry is because he's given you gifts and abilities that other people don't have. Not everybody can do what Buzz and Clip Ann do, but we can help them get to where they need to go. Not everybody can do what Vic does, but we can help him and his crew get to the streets or where they need to go. Not everybody can preach in Portuguese to the people of Brazil, 
but Marcelo and Gustavo can. We all have a purpose. We all have a reason to move forward. So the, the title of today's sermon is Think Outside the Box. Change the way that you're thinking about your ministry. Change the way that you're thinking about the church. You guys, there's, there's one thing that God is doing different today, and, and he's breaking tradition. He's breaking tradition, and sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it's painful because we've always cooked the turkey this way. We've always watched that certain football game on Thanksgiving morning. It's a tradition that the Detroit Lions get beat every Thursday. <laughs> I've wondered why the Chiefs don't play on Thursday. And probably so. But, but the point is, you guys, we get in all these traditions around the holidays. We get in all these traditions in the church, and tradition doesn't save anybody. Listen, I want to make sure you hear this. The Holy Spirit doesn't work in tradition. The Holy Spirit doesn't work in religion. We have got to learn to let the power of the Holy Spirit flow in our lives. We've got to let the Holy Spirit Tell us where to be, when to be, and how to be. Did you just catch that? Where to be, when to be, and how to be. We've canceled out the power of the Holy Spirit through tradition. The church has always done it this way. The church has always knelt like this and lit candles like that and decorated like this and done that. The church has always passed the offering plate this way. The church has always had a bulletin. What is God wanting us to do? Now, now don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people in the church that serve, and those are good things. And I tell you what, I appreciate everything everybody does. Does the decorations of the trees look nice today or what? There's very few people that did that. the people that served in the kitchen this morning, the people that set up the chairs last night, I appreciate that. A meal is, is a covenant, and we have fellowship together, and we sit around the table. But you guys, God spoke to me right over here last week when the pastors and Jamie were praying, and people in the church were praying, and the Holy Spirit was freeing pastors and, and taking off problems and giving healing. And God said, Troy, is the power of the Holy Spirit and prayer more important than anything in the church? Are we worried about how straight the chairs are and we forget about the power of Jesus Christ? We need to drop those things and throw them aside when God says to be right here. To be right here. Guys, far too long we're, we're vacuuming, vacuuming the rug when God says you should be praying. You can do both. She's right. You guys know that I, I spray a lot of yards, and, and, and I'm always got my head down, so it always looks like I'm praying, but I'm spraying those yards, but I'm walking along talking to God. And sometimes when I show up to that customer's house, I'm praying over that customer, and they don't even know it. And people think I'm talking to myself all the time, but I'm talking to Jesus. I'm talking to Jesus. And it's not just about killing weeds. It's about getting rid of sin. It's about changing the things in our lives so that he can use us in a way that we've never been used before. I want you guys to think of the impossible, the imaginable that you can't do that God can. That God can. Think outside the box in your life. Trent, think outside the box. Because he's getting ready to do the imaginable in your life. You heard it last week, and I called you out, didn't I? Oh, come over and smacked you right in the chest. Did that hurt? A little bit. 
a little bit, but, but, you, you, but you're tough. I said, that's you. That's you. I seem to pick on these two quite a bit. I'm not picking on you. God's giving you direction, Brian. God's giving you direction to get stronger in the Lord and get ready for what's coming. Because something good's coming. How do, how do we define good? How do we define great? How do we define it? By everything perfect in our lives, that, that we're healthy, we have tons of money, that, that we're happy instead of joyful. That's not good. That's not great. I'm talking about the greatness in your heart for Jesus Christ and what Jesus is wanting to do in your life to touch somebody else's life. Sometimes the, the storms come in the middle of the night and they're not fun and they hurt and they're not great, but it is great because it changes you into something that you're not and you become stronger in faith and more powerful and more loving and kind to the people that wear biker's clothes. Vic, I'm sorry, I got to tell you this. When I was in high school, I asked my dad if I could get an earring. And he said, you're going to wear a dress, too, if you do. <laughs> you know I love you. <laughs> uh, I couldn't resist. There's nothing wrong with that. God's using them. God's using them. Is God using you? Are you making yourself available for God to use you? Or are you sitting right here on the front row going, look at Troy and Vic. They don't even match. They wear different clothes and, and they're going to go to the streets together. Look at those two fools. They don't even know what they're talking about. What are you doing? What are you doing? Do we get it right 100% of the time? No. Do we mess up? Yes. But you know what? That's why Jesus went to the cross to cover the things that we don't know. The things that we don't know, he covered it. And he said, get back up in the saddle and ride. And when you're not doing it right, Paul, I'll knock you on the ho off the horse on the way to Damascus and I'll blind you for a little while and then I'll bring the light. Sometimes God makes us sit in the, the blindness so he can speak to us. Sometimes the storm, we can't see through it, but, but God brings those things so we can see clearly on the other side. Let me ask you, church, do you love Jesus today? Let me ask you, church, do you believe in Jesus that he died for your sins today? Let me ask you, church, are you willing to speak against religion today that doesn't save you and is destroying families and giving people false hope? Are you willing to speak against it today? Not with hate, but with self-control and love and truth. Sometimes God tells us to say some pretty hard things that people aren't used to hearing in the church. But you guys, I'm here to tell you today, and I'm not the only person that God's speaking to, but I'm here to tell you today that he, he's making an end time push. And if men stay in tradition, if we keep doing what we're doing, we're going to miss it. We can't keep doing what we're doing because what we're doing is not working. We got to think outside the box. Guys, we shouldn't hold events in the church just to be busy and think that that's our duty. We should only be doing the things that God calls us to do in the church. And if he says, have this event on downtown Main Street, Hoisington, we go. Because because Troy, Vic, there's one person, Kyle, there's only one. May, maybe 300 are going to show up. But Troy, I'm just going to have you drag all that stuff. I'm going to have little John bring all his sound system over. Just for one. Just for one. What? One? one. Just for one. I'm going to Sturgis just for one. Just for one. Just for one. God loves you so much. And the word that he's given me, you remember a few weeks ago when I was going through the nine gifts of the Spirit 
and I forgot one. I'm like, which one was it? And Jack Bailey bailed me out and said, Troy, self-control. You're leaving out self-control. And this morning, God told me that wasn't a coincidence that I left that out. He said, Troy, I want you to think about self-control. What is pulling on you so hard that you can't say no to? What, what's self-control when, when God's telling you to do this and you decide to go do that? Or, 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 or when that lust overtakes you and you've got to have some self-control. Men, have some self-control. God loves you. Allow the glory of God in your life to become greater than your sin. And that stuff's easier to say no to. Pull up Romans chapter 8, verse 5 and 6. Marcella, will you come here? we got it right here listen I, I, church I want you guys to focus on this God's been talking to me about the church and teaching the power of the Holy Spirit how to live how to live how to live for those who live according to the flesh porque aqueles que vivem segundo a natureza humana set their minds on the things of the flesh Colocam as suas mentes. As suas mentes são controladas pela mesma natureza. But those who live to the Spirit, Mas aqueles que vivem de acordo com o Espírito Santo. The of the as coisas do Espírito. Listen, you guys. God is speaking that in all languages. That's why I brought Marcelo up here. God's speaking it in English. He's speaking it in Portuguese. He's speaking it in Spanish. We're going to do that again. Back up again, Ryan. Can you do that? Now, now listen to this. For those who live according to the flesh, listen. For those who live according to the flesh, continue to sin, continue to think with Satan, continue to live for Satan, continue in alcohol and drug abuse, continue to disbelieve, continue to go your own way, continue to, to make quick decisions in the flesh those who live in the flesh make decisions without God God's wanting you to think on the second part of that verse set their minds on the things flesh. but those who live according to the spirit that means you listen to the spirit before you open your flap the biggest mistake that men and women do is they open their flap without thinking in the spirit and, they, and every time you speak you should say is this what Jesus would say or am I going to continue to gossip about those people downtown that, that did something am I going to gossip in the church am I going to try to separate people the enemy wants to cause division in the church. He wants to cause division in your workplace and in your life. But when you live according to the Spirit, then we start to do the things of the Spirit. We start to live in the nine fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, goodness, and self-control. Hit it again, Marcel. Yeah. Yeah. Porque as pessoas que vivem de acordo com a natureza humana têm a sua mente controlada por essa mesma natureza. Mas as que vivem de acordo com o Espírito Santo de Deus, a mente delas é controlada pelo Espírito Santo. Verse 6. As pessoas que têm a mente controlada pela natureza humana acabarão morrendo. Mas as que têm a mente controlada pelo Espírito de Deus terão a vida eterna e paz. How, how many of you could understand a word she was saying? And I know there's one. Marcia, God bless you. Gustavo, yes. Look, but, 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 but listen, listen. Gustavo, Marcia, wh what if that was the only language you spoke? God came for one. God bless you. God came for one. 
There will be no language interpretation left out. The whole world's going to hear. Every knee's going to bow. Every tongue's going to confess. And he's not going to leave anybody out. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is what? Say it with me, life and peace. To be spiritually minded, you get life in heaven. You get a more abundant life here because, because you're living in the spirit and you find peace in the storm. Find peace in the storm, Marcella. What's God telling you right now? Say something. Does he have anything on your heart? What? No. Actually, it's so important. When, actually, when we read in the verse 6, I'm going to read now in English, but to be controlled by human nature results in death. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are struggling and we are doing our 100%, but we are still in the wrong way. Mm -hmm straight to the death and uh, we need to realize that God told us I'm just putting in front of you life and death you can choose so just choose today life because sometimes we are working so hard and we are going straight to the hell straight to death mm. so this That's is powerful or so thank you God bless you my sister You guys, God's teaching in every language. He's teaching in every way. I don't know what Heartland Church did to, to have such a beautiful couple in Gustavo and Marcella to come here. But I just want to remind you, every time she preaches for me, you guys don't know how hard that is. She's teaching me some Portuguese, and I can't even get the first word right. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Does anybody know what that is? Jesus. I can't even get it right. And, but you know when she sat across the desk teaching me that? God said, Troy, now you know how hard it is for her to learn the English language and get up and preach in front of people. So you guys stand with her when she preaches. You encourage her. You, you bring joy to her life and keep encouraging her because she's got a gift. And we need to let her use it. We don't know where God's going to send people. But he has to give them a platform to learn on. Mine was across the street. If Arlen never gave me a chance to preach, I wouldn't be here today. If he never sat down with his Bible and opened it up and said, Troy, look at it this way. Troy, don't do that. Troy, whatever you do, win people to Christ. That's the most important thing, and I've always lived by that. There's nothing I'd rather be doing than adding somebody to the kingdom. And I don't do what God does. I just bring myself along and say, God, use me. Use me. But that verse is where it starts for the church. I want that verse to be the foundation of Heartland Church. Those who live according to the Spirit do spiritual things, and it brings life and peace over your life. Don't let the enemy steal the Spirit of God out of your life. You have to think outside the box. Every decision you're making should be in the Spirit. Every word that you speak should be in the Spirit. And if you've lost your joy, then take a break and go find God. If you've lost your joy, take a break and go find God. Did you hear that, church? Whew. God's, God's after the hearts of men and women today. Listen to this. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 14, 1 through 14. Now it happened one day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the Philistine garrison that is on the other side. But he did not tell his father, Saul. And Saul was sitting out on the outskirts of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree, which is in Migran. The people who were with him were about 600 men. Agi, the son of 
Atub, Ichabod's brother, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh, was wearing an ephod. But the people did not know that Jonathan had gone. Between the passes by which Jonathan sought to go over to the Philistine garrison, there was a sharp rock on one side and a sharp rock on the other side. And the name of one rock was Bozaz, and the name of the other is Shinnai. The front of one faced northward over Memash, and the other southward opposite Givai. Then, listen, then Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord, and hold this, Ryan, nothing restrains the Lord for saving by many, or by what? So you can make a difference. Just the people sitting in your row can make a difference. Few. Not the army of 600, but the army of a few. Next verse. So his arm bearer said to him, Do that is in all your heart. Go then, here I am with you according to your heart. Then Jonathan said, Very well, let us cross over to these men, and we will show ourselves to them. If they say thus to us, Wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and not go up to them. But if he says thus, come up to us, then we will go up, for the Lord has delivered them into our hand, and this will be a sign to us. So both of them showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines, and the Philistines said, look, the Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they're hidden. They're making fun of them. Then the men of the garrison called to Jonathan and said, arm bearer, and said, come up to us, and we will show you something. Jonathan said to him, and hold this right, Jonathan said to his armor, come up after me for the Lord has delivered them into the hand of Israel. What is Jonathan saying right there? Do you guys realize that only two men, they left the whole army down there and only two men are going up to fight the Philistines and there's about 20 men in that garrison and these two are crawling in a small narrow path on sharp rocks on each side on their hands and knees. They're, it's not an easy walk. Not an easy walk at all. They're climbing I thought about that, how hard that must be. I was spraying the yard the other day, and I had the whole 300-foot hose out, and I was leaning halfway over, pulling, and I got the other end of the yard, and I was like, whew. And I thought, how did Jonathan do that? How did Jonathan do that? He not only climbed through a steep cliff of rocks that are sharp on each side that if you fell would cut you at any time, you'd fall to your death. You know how he did it? He was looking up. At the Father. He trusted in God and he spoke out victory. You realize he prophesied over the battle that was coming? He told his arm bearer, God's delivering them to us before we get up there. He already spoke victory. I don't know what you're going through, but whatever you're going through, you need to speak victory into it. Before the battle comes, you need to speak victory. You need to speak it loud. You need to speak it out. You need to tell the enemy to get behind you because God's already set victory before you. God's already set victory before you. Do you believe it today, church? Next verse. And Jonathan climbed up on his hands and knees with his arm bearer and after him, and they fell before Jonathan. And as he came after them, his arm bearer killed them. That first slaughter with Jonathan and his arm bearer made was about 20 men within about a half acre of land. You guys, I, I believe that that Jonathan's eyes were focused so much on God and his dad's eyes weren't. Saul, Saul was going the wrong way. Saul took a prophet with him out of the generations of Eli's son who went their own way. He canceled Samuel, the prophet, out. He didn't want to listen to Samuel. And God said, you know what, Jonathan, because you trust me, you believe in me, I'm going to do something with a few. You tell your dad to sit down because he doesn't know me. The path is narrow, and few enter it. You guys, in, in, in Romans, it says, Romans 8, 31. You got that, Ryan? Listen. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for all, us all, how shall he not with him also freely give all things to us. Now, I want you to focus on that. God didn't spare his only son. 
Listen. The only thing that you needed was a Savior. And the only way God could do it was send the only Son that He had to die for you. You needed nothing else. And He, he, he could have sent you a flowers and an iced tea or a Pepsi and it had done you no good. But he gave all. And Jonathan knew that God said he would deliver him. And in all things, Jonathan went and fought the battle. And the, you know what? Victory was already spoken, but Jonathan knew the climb would be hard. I don't know what storm's going on in your life, but the climb could be hard. But if you shout out victory and you look on the other side, God's going to give you victory. Victory isn't always in the things of this world. Did you hear me, church? Victory isn't always in the things of this world. It's in the things of the kingdom. God wants you in his kingdom. He wants to prosper you in his kingdom. He wants to walk you to his kingdom. He wants to love you to his kingdom. Do you receive it today, church? Psalms 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. If you've lost your joy, be still and know that he's God. Imagine something greater than yourself. Glorification comes when, when we allow the presence of God to consume us and we remove sin from our life. If you want the glory of God to come in your life, then allow sin to be gone and dealt with. I call this the big three. His word his spirit, and the gift of eternal life all comes when you give up those things that are in the flesh. But when we live, worship team, if you'll come forward. When, when, when you live according to the spirit, you're in his word, and you're moving forward in his word, and you're inviting his spirit, and you're allowing the Holy Spirit to consume you and overtake you, and then eternal life is guaranteed because you've given your life to Jesus Christ. You guys, there is no other way no other way, no other way. Did I say no other way to get to the kingdom of God is the only way is through Jesus Christ, your Savior. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God promises to meet all your needs. He met all of Jonathan's needs. He promises to meet all your needs through his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Is there a need that you feel like God hasn't met in your life today? Then talk to him about it. But it's not, an, it's not something that you don't need. It's not something that you just want. It's not more money. God will take care of those things if you're tithing and giving your offerings to the places that he tells you. Your main need is a relationship. I'll tell you what your need is. Your only need is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you have a personal, loving, spending time reading the Word and believing in Jesus Christ, you have everything you need because that all comes and follows Him. Jesus never ran out of a resource. He never not loved. He never, he never hated. He never spoke ill-gotten of anyone. You guys, one, one thing that I... That, no, God told me not. I'm, I'm not going to say that. All right. Just trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Jonathan's path was clear. Listen, Jonathan's path was clear, but there were sharp rocks on both sides. So God's going to show you the path, and sometimes it's curvy, and sometimes it's hard to steer around without going off the road. But he's going to make your path clear to you, and he's going to give you a way up the path and through the rocks and over the shore and through the mountains to where he wants you to go and fight your battle. Fight your battle. God loves you today.
Hallelujah, praised be your name, Jesus, because you are everything that you have. Lord, sometimes it's so hard. Lord, sometimes it's so hard to trust in you about everything in our lives. Sometimes it's so hard because we want to do in our own way. It's not hard to trust in Jesus. It's hard to trust He will do it in our own way. I'm here today to remember you. You can trust Him. You can surrender before Him. He will never let you down. So today, may His grace, may His mercy be upon you. May His face shine upon you. May His favor be with you. Because He is here for you. Do not be concerned about your future. Do not be concerned, concerned about how he's going to wait for you tomorrow because he's already there. And he brought you here today because the Holy Spirit started, started something inside your heart. You cannot understand today. You cannot understand today. Maybe you are not understanding what's going on here. But he... Jesus, the King of the nations, the King above all the nations, He is for you. Just trust Him. I'm here. It's hard for me to be here, but I'm here because I trust in Him. So now I pray that His presence will be with you and you will not be shaken. May His face shine upon you and may His favor be with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 